Hi, I am Dr. Mio Mashabi, Assistant Professor from UCSI University in Malaysia. And the topic which I am going to present today is an experimental study on the application of chelating agents in crystallizing hydrocarbon gel. Crystallizing basically is the process to dissolve the damage which is present around the well bore. Well bore basically is the area uh, around the well of hydro oil and gas well. Uh, basically, what we do, we inject the acid inside to remove the minerals or the particles or damage present around the well bore should be dissolved. Thus, we increase the porosity and permeability of the rock sample. Our oil and gas present inside the empty spaces inside the rock sample, so that's why increasing the porosity and permeability will increase the quality of the reservoir around the well bore. So this is a schematic diagram which shows a well and the rock around it. We inject the acid, the acid will fracture the rock sample or it will dissolve the rock sample and it enlarges the pore channels around the well bore and creates the channels to, for the oil to move into the well bore and to the surface. But there are some problems with acidizing, for example, corrosion, fast action and sensitivity to place which should be considered while doing the acidizing process. For corrosion, we need a corrosion inhibitor. For fast reaction, we need to dilute the acid. And for sensitivity of clays, we need to avoid the use of acid to which clays are sensitive. Therefore, it does process consists of three stages, pre flush stage, main acid stage, and after flush stage, in which we use different fluids to complete the process of acidizing. The sensor formation is very important because most of the oil in the oil consists of uh, present inside the rock samples, which are sandstone. It consists of different particles like dolomite, quartz, phosphite, elite, etc. So, in experimental procedure, we cut the core sample, we clean the core sample, we dry the core sample, and then measure the weight of the core sample before and after sizing, measure the porosity and permeability of the rock sample before and after sizing. Find the minority of the core sample before and after sizing. Cut the core sample for microscopy scan analysis and saturate the core sample for NMR analysis. So core flooding is one of the main process which we have to perform during this experiment. So it consists of a temperature controller, SPLC pump, change pump, collection point, pressure transducer, gas negotiation system, heating tape, and core holder. What we do, we put the core inside the core holder, fill the water, fill the core holder with the water with the help of a syringe pump, then inject the acid with the help of HPLC pump, heat the, uh, heat the core holder with the help of a heating tape. So these are other processes we do during the process of core flooding and when the experiments or core flooding process is completed, we remove the connections and we get the core sample, active core sample, and dry it. So different core samples are used in this research, consists of various sandstone, corrosion sandstone, and coarse dolomite. Each have different properties of porosity, permeability, and mineralogy. This is the flow chart. We start the process with preparing the tinting agents and the core sample when we do, uh, then we do the initial permeability porosity check, and then find, uh, do the core flooding of uh, experiments. Then we get the collected core sample, uh, reacted core sample, then check the final permeability, porosity, mineralogy, do CT scan analysis, and finally determine the reaction mechanism of the tilting agent with the core sample. These are small samples which are prepared for thema and CT scan analysis. I move towards the analysis. First of all, is the porosity analysis. First is the uh, amount of porous material, amount of pores or empty spaces inside the rock sample. So from here, you see that the best result in case of uh, HEDTA are shown by uh, HEDTA in case of golden sandstone. Best results are shown by HEDTA in case of gross dolomite. And best results are shown by HEDTA in case of radius sandstone. Means the maximum permeability increase occurs when we use HEDTA in all the rock samples. Now, to see the permeability, they are also the same, like 
maximum increase in permeability has been shown by HDTA in case of tight sandstone and in case of uh, good dolomite. Then we move towards the NMR analysis. NMR analysis basically are the nuclear magnetic resonance analysis in which we find the um, uh, FFI and BVI. FFI is free fluid index, means the four spaces in which the fluids are free to move, which are large pore spaces, and uh, BVI, which is uh, bulk volume reducible. In this one, the pore size is small and the fluid is not allowed to move, which means the small pore spaces. Now you see the results here. If you see the blue orange line, orange line represents the ink. after reaction, uh, the curve and blue line shows the uh, curve before the reaction. And if you see the difference here in case of uh, uh, sample, you see, you can see a clear difference between the blue and the orange. It means the permeability has been, in, uh, frosty has been increased by the chelating agents. So now if you compare the results in terms of a table, so the golden sandstone, the maximum permeability is, uh, frosty is increased by HDTA. In case of dual dolomite, the maximum porosity is increased by HDTA. And even in various sandstone, the maximum porosity is increased by HDTA, which shows that HDTA is very effective in increasing the porosity or and permeability of the rock samples. Elemental analysis shows the amount of elements present inside the core sample. And in, the, in this case also, the blue line shows HDTA. So sodium, potassium, calcium has been dissolved by HDTA effectively. Then the pore size analysis, pore size analysis are very important because the pore size analysis shows that amount of pores present inside the core sample. So maximum amount of uh, pores has been increased in case of HDTA and EDTTA. Finally, the CT scan and finally the CT scan analysis. So this is the initial sample. But if you see after reaction for GTL, GLDA, EDTA, and HDTA, you can see the new channels or the pores or the worms hole has been created here. So this can be confirmed by this uh, with these pictures. If you see a pink pink sign here, pink sign shows different minerals present inside. So in unreacted samples, you can say see some minerals, but in reacted samples, the minerals are dissolved. So here also, there are some minerals present inside unreacted sample, but after reaction, these are dissolved. These are the samples of the good dolomite. So it shows that uh, the good dolomite has been uh, dissolved, or the minerals has been dissolved, present inside the good dolomite by these chilets. In conclusion, I can say that the pore size distribution shows an overall increased number of pores for all the three core samples. The increase describes the dissolution of minerals from the core samples connected with the chelating agents and acids. The increase in large pore size has tremendously contributed towards the overall increase in the porosity and permeability of the core sample. HDTA can be recommended for tight sandstone and carbonate crystallizing, while GLDA can be good for area and dolomite. Moreover, nuclear magnetic resonance analysis conducted that fresh large pore spaces has been created using the chelating agents, especially HDTA results are quite significant for all types of pore samples. It means HDTA can be very effective in stressing sandstone formation. Uh, thank you.